And the Smithsonian, being a world-class institution in its own regard, had this project for passive house construction at their Environmental Research Center in Edgewater, Maryland. One of the reasons we wanted to do this video series was because we wanted to present what Passive House was in a very apolitical or even secular sort of approach. What are the challenges to design? What are the challenges to construction? We have literally seen teams who've never heard the words Passive House learn about it, get excited, get inspired, and knock it out of the park. A big challenge of this program has been getting people to change their thinking and their approach. So the Smithsonian Green Village project is designed to be passive house. Trident Builders has done a lot of energy infrastructure projects such as renewable energy, but we hadn't done passive house. You walk up to a house like this, all right, it's a 1400 square foot home. It's three bedroom, it's got a kitchen with all electric appliances, it's got a washer dryer. The only difference between this house and a normal conventional house is that with the addition of solar energy panels on the top of the house, this house is gonna use net zero energy. And in fact, it is producing more energy than it uses day or night, 365. Basically, Passive House is predicated on five basic design principles. We start with a, an awareness of the site and climate and understand what sort of energy balance the site has before we even show up. We're aware of the free available energy assets on the site and we try to optimize for harvesting them when we want them and blocking them when we don't. Two is we create a continuous thermal envelope and we make it very thermally efficient. That means we completely surround the building with a highly insulated blanket and we make sure that that goes from the very top of the building to underneath the foundation and wraps around the building continuously. The next main design principle is air tightness. We draw a continuous blue line diagram of air tightness around the entire building enclosure and passive house buildings are orders of magnitude more airtight. And the reason for this is that a very significant amount of energy passes through a building just from exhaust and exfiltration and infiltration. And once you've air sealed the building, you want to have appropriate ventilation for the occupants of the building. And so we have continuous heat recovery ventilation. So that means that a machine is bringing in balanced amount of exhaust and incoming air. It passes those through a heat recovery core, which is 85% efficient or so, and filters the air. So you get continuous, fresh, filtered, heat exchanged air. With Passive House, it goes to every little nook and cranny detail. The amount of time and energy in the design process and the coordination process is five times more intensive than you would see in a conventional 1400 square foot home. We need to be thinking across disciplines. We need to be thinking about what the other teammates are doing, right? For example, when we were laying out the initial units, the civil engineer had a very commonsensical layout based upon storm drainage and other conventions to civil engineering. But that civil engineer is not thinking about what the electrical engineer and the solar panels are gonna be doing. That's where the contractor had to step in and be like, if you rotate these things further south with a more southerly face, we're gonna yield greater solar production and more solar energy. It's very much a collaborative process and it needs to be because the parameters and the margin of error is so small. And that is one of the things that I think a lot of construction and design teams will underestimate. As we're pushing around dirt, the design team needs to be working on their projects. It's not that we've got a couple months for them to figure it out. In Passive House, that box needs to be figured out as we are playing in the dirt. I have multiple roles. One is to ensure the safety of everybody that comes on to our project, monitor the construction process, and make sure everybody's doing what they're tasked to do. During the trenching process, we had to be very cautious. We had pre-existing conditions uh, that we had to deal with due to the fact that we have surrounding buildings that were already in place. So we had to dig up to the lines, uncover them, and feed our lines underneath where we could. We had some challenges with getting the initial site infrastructure rolling along simply because we have some tight areas to work in with stormwater management, storm drainage, sewer, water, electrical, all to be implemented on this site for these six cottages. But being on a federal site, there were so many underground utilities that we just didn't know about. We knew some were there, but every time we put a shovel in the ground, we encountered something new. We encountered a new underground electrical line that no one knew about that was still active. 
it was very time consuming, but it had to be. We had to make sure we weren't gonna disturb the community around us. We still had to take our time uh, due to the fact that we are doing a passive house and that starts from the ground up below the slab. The preparation for the foundation is different. Now in this case, our stem walls, the foundation walls, are very conventional, but the slab is not. So you need all of your plumbing, all of that stuff to be in place. And then you need an ironclad vapor retarder put down and rendered really airtight. Corners neatly folded and taped. Penetrations coming through have to be gasketed or taped. So when the concrete comes, it's already airtight underneath. Believe it or not, quite a bit of air can be brought in from underneath the ground if you don't air seal the foundation. Well, this is a little bit of a unique project because it's a passive house. Right now, we are pouring the slabs on the third and fourth building. There's six buildings. Typically, a concrete foundation slab has four inches of concrete and four inches of stone. Here, instead of four inches of stone, the design is to, to use perlite. Here we have perlite, which is a natural product from volcanoes. So instead of using stone, which doesn't have very good insulation, the concept of bringing this from where the subgrade was, the ground, and putting it eight inches up would help with the insulation below the slab. So there's two aspects of our concrete mix that's a bit different. Instead of using 100% Portland cement, taken about a third of that out and replaced it with slag, which is a byproduct of the iron industry, and that allows us to use a recycled product. We also have our ready mix supplier using something called Carbon Cure. Carbon Cure is a mechanical process that adds carbon that's in the atmosphere into the concrete before it comes out to site. And then it gets embedded in the concrete and then doesn't go back out into the atmosphere. Yeah, this is a finished slab. And what we have here, I'm holding the vapor barrier, 15 mil. Our concrete wall is here in the center. On the outside, we have three inches of insulation. We have the drain board, waterproofing, we got our wall. Then on the interior is more insulation. So what, what's going on is the insulation and the vapor barrier make a break between the concrete slab and the wall. And that helps keep the wall and the slab at different temperatures and will help support the passive house nature. So tell me about working with Blueprint Robotics. Working with Blueprint Robotics has been great. We have been pursuing some work with them in Baltimore for a couple years now. So when we saw that they were a requirement in the specifications for the Smithsonian, we were very aggressive about pursuing this project. We wanted to work with them. Hey, what's up, hey, Brandon? How you doing? Welcome to Blueprint. Thank you. Thanks. Blueprint Robotics is an off-site building system manufacturer in Baltimore, Maryland. We have a 200,000 square foot facility here. Our scope of work is in the factory. Those machines are doing all the cutting, nailing, and drillings for the wood frame that we produce in a panelized format. So all the walls, floors, and roofs are panelized. We're also providing all of the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing rough-in here in the factory. And the machines are providing all the routings and drillings for those MEP pathways. We also build a digital twin of the architect's model. We take the architect's drawings, engineer's drawings, review it. Then I feed that information to my team and we go through and we start designing the model three-dimensionally. It's a completely different process and a different way of thinking because everything has to be decided and confirmed up front. I have to look at it as this holistic element and this element has like 15 different things that could possibly like any slight twist throws it completely off. Everything that happens inside that panel we need to decide what happens to it now. And that is like the biggest challenge. It's like, yes, I know we can fix it in the field because that's the thought process. Like, oh no, we don't worry about that. We'll fix it later. We'll fix it later. We fix it now. So kitchen over in this space, the bathroom on this side, first floor bedroom. You even see the stairs and the laundry room that's back here in the corner. We're able to look under the slab. Well, if you imagine that there is a slab in this space, and see all the plumbing elements that are in here. 
And if we go up a bit into the second floor, and here you see the Epica system, um, all the ducting that goes in and out. You know, we've coordinated these whole locations with the structural engineer. You know, our panel comes out pretty much as you see it here. Two bedrooms on the second floor. There's one in here, one here. Bathroom, and then, you know, I think it's a study or an office. Even if there's like holes within the stud, you're able to see the locations of these holes. So accuracy is a very big part of our process. It's pretty impressive. The framing station is where we're gonna actually begin to assemble the building itself. We're actually building on multi walls so we can have multiple walls using a singular piece of lumber for the top and bottom plates, which allows for us to be more efficient and waste less of the wood product itself. From the framing station, it's gonna come down to the end of this bridge here where this Wyman CNC machinery is going to apply any sort of exterior sheathing. So that would be the WRB. Oscar, can we sneak through? Okay. So once the panels are sheathed, they're then gonna be housed in these racks here where we're gonna install all of the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and fire protection systems for the project. So all exterior windows and doors are installed here in the factory before they even arrive on site. Nobody's installing a window five stories in the air. It's not snowing, it's not raining. And then we're able to be extremely accurate, especially with large windows. It's a vacuum lift, so it'll actually hold the larger window pieces for the installer. So it only you only need one person to install a sliding glass door. This bridge here is our insulation bridge. And for the Cirque Cottages, this was in full use. The machine is uh, pressurizing that insulation into the cavity, obviously all CNC driven, so it needs, needs, knows the size and location of every cavity. And as you can see here, these are actually fully packed out floor trusses. And in these trusses, you can see that we have a lot of the HVAC systems and ducts in here. So they'll be delivered on site just as such and installed right there on site. There's a significant amount of flexibility in what we do. We're pretty collaborative with our customers and um, you know we also provide a lot of suggestions for best practices for passive house as well of just designing for manufacturing and assembly. Absolutely, absolutely. It's like you're, it's not just about cutting efficiency and cutting time, it's also about doing it the best possible way. And you can only achieve that in a factory because the fact of the matter is I've been doing this for 20 something years like there's just too many variables on any given day out in the field, all right, that like it's really hard to institute this level of quality control, okay, at a price point the market will bear. Through this entire process, it's been a very collaborative approach between our two organizations. There's no real hierarchy, we're basically like running the football down together. So after everything has been set up and we've gotten everything built at the factory, the factory's team starts assembling these houses two at a time. But what's incredible is how fast it goes once it arrives from the factory. We have a tight site, so it was pretty amazing to watch Blueprint when it came time to erect the cottages. It was interesting to see how they were managing the delivery of their panels and get them up into a position where the crane was erected to actually crane them into place what Blueprint would do, would, they brought it, their crane in and set it between the two foundations and basically that way they could pick up cottage one, put their walls in, the framing company would come in, start framing on those, get them to a certain point, then the crane would just swing over and start loading up cottage two. It was a coordinated effort and then being on a tight site, that's what really made it hard. It was an amazing process to see how efficient the panelization and modularization, including all the MEP trades in those walls. It was just so different from the normal commercial construction process. Once things started coming together, it just went very well. Everybody got into a rhythm. The first one was a little challenging because just a brand new product. Again, collaboration with Blueprint because they're making sure their plans were what we were seeing. The attention to detail that is required in Passive House is really not to be underestimated. With a passive house, it's something that I've never done before. It's something that Trident has never done before. So 
We were all here learning as we began this journey, and that included having a third-party consultant, a passive house certifier, verifier on site to see the connections, see how things were going together, see how air and vapor barriers were being overlapped and being tied together, to point out areas where we could fail if we weren't attentive to those needs at this stage. Very unique. I've never had to deal with that attention to detail when it comes to air penetration. So over the course of maybe five days, six days, they got two cottages erected from a panelization standpoint under roof and moved on to the next pair. While the factory crew is going from the first pair to the second pair, our team of contractors are swarming the, the houses, putting on the exterior skin, putting on the roof, starting to do finishing touches within the inside. All six units more or less are getting assembled at the same time in various phases, and the trades all chase each other around. It's literally like a swarm or a hive of worker bees everywhere. I'm excited for this to be done because we all go through the highs and lows of construction, and we, we slowly see things come together. This was a different animal. It seemed like it would never get started, and then once it did, it happened so fast in the blink of an eye, and then we're ready to turn the project over to the owner in almost no time. We've been working on this project for almost a year, all right? This is so exciting to watch. It is so much fun. I mean, like you've got workers all over the place, like things going up faster than you can imagine. It's looking cool, people are happy, people are pumped. It's exciting to do this type of work. But there's a bigger opportunity here for places like Baltimore and frankly, cities across the country. Trident Builders wants to bring this passive house model to cities like Baltimore. These properties contribute to crime, violence, and economic decline. This housing is covered in lead. It's covered in asbestos. Some of them have trees growing through them. There's going to be a huge value and, and benefits for all of Baltimore if we start doing more passive houses in these blocks that are just 10 row homes of vacant houses. It's really called Charm City for a reason. The, the people, the passion, you know, we're here to make the city better. That's, that's what it's about.